Mills, Sir John Mills. Well, I think um, uh, one thing I remember about Larry is that he owned, he owned the stage when he walked on it. I mean, he really, it belonged to him and, and he totally owned it. He was wonderful to watch in the theatre. He was, he was complete magic. But the thing I remember about Larry, and of course, uh, he was my, probably my oldest friend, is that he was such enormous fun to be with. I mean, he was, um, he loved being funny. And I'm sure he'd want to be remembered as a very funny man. He was great company. The organ swells to Nimrod from the Enigma Variations by Sir Edward Elgin. Famous faces waiting for the service to start. Joan Collins there with the green scarf on, Jill Bennett on her right, Edward Fox sitting behind them. Sir John Gielgud, who will be reading during this service, a great friend and a great friendly rival of Laurence Olivier right through their careers, sitting alone just this side of the high altar in the Sacrarium. And in this service, there's going to be a very special procession of the objects that symbolize the life and work of Laurence Olivier. Carried to the high altar first by Douglas Fairbanks, Olivier's order of merit, his most treasured honor perhaps, the gift of the Queen. And then behind him, this special Oscar given for a lifetime's achievement in the film industry, which will be carried by Michael Caine. Paul Schofield with the silver model of the National Theatre, of which Olivier was director. And before that, of course, he was at the Festival Theatre at Chichester, and this silver model will be carried by Maggie Smith, one of his great friends. And then symbols of his career, this fascinating film script of Hamlet, when he directed himself in the film. Peter O'Toole will be carrying that. Then there's the wreath that was worn by Olivier as Coriolanus. It's going to be carried by Ian McKellen. And the two crowns, the left King Lear's crown from the television series, carried by Dorothy Tutin, and Richard III's crown, carried by Derek Jacobi. And finally, at the rear of the procession, carried by Frank Finlay, this sword, which was first worn by Edmund Keane at the start of the 19th century to play Richard III. It was then presented to Henry Irving, it was finally given through the Terry family to Sir John Gielgud, and he gave it to Laurence Olivier to mark his performance as Richard III in 1944. And this is the procession of the representatives of the royal family, led by the Dean's Verger. Palmer representing the Duke and Duchess of Kent, representative Princess Margaret, Richard Attenborough representing the Prince and Princess of Wales, Martin Gilliatt representing the Queen Mother, and His Royal Highness Prince Edward, who's himself in the theatre, of course, who is the senior member of the royal family who's come here, and behind him Lord Zuckerman representing the Queen. Edward, one of the first members of the royal family to go into the world of the theatre, but the Olivier family, who are sitting here on the south side of the choir, are all in the profession, or almost all in the profession. Joan Plywright, Lady Olivier, Olivier's third wife there, sitting in the centre. Famous 
actress in her own right. And next to her, her two daughters, Julie, Olivier, who's also on the stage. And her son, Richard Olivier, is here. And then Olivier's grandson as well, Tristan Olivier, and other members of the family. And on the far right, in the spectacles, Laurence Olivier's first wife, Jill Esmond. So it's for the service to begin. Fanfare from the music to Hamlet by Sir William Walton. And now praise to the holiest in the height. <laughs> 